Hey, how y'all doing? This is another episode of True Seeking Trucker. Uh, wanted to come back to you with the Word of God in Daniel 5, titled Writing on the Wall. So with this, um, let's start with some prayer. And I just want to let you know, this is the third time uh, trying to put this video out. And I will rebuke the devil because I believe I'm actually being spiritually attacked at this point. There's just too much stuff that's been going on. I know he's behind it now. I thought, you know, for it could have been just simple things like the, you know, technology failure. But in this prayer, we're going to rebuke the devil. And here we go. Father God, we thank you and glorify you. You are a refuge. You are a fortress. You, we dwell in your shadow. Father, you deserve all the glory. You shield us from the evil one. Father, at this point, we rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Through his power and authority, do we command the devil to get behind us. Because we were putting out the word of God, and we love God, and we exalt thy the most high. Father God, thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for the ability to fight back against this evil one that's destroying families, that's destroying this country, that's polluting the, young, the youth's mind with these mass shootings. Father God, may your spirit, all omnipotent, could be anywhere at any time. Hear our cry as the believers that we fight back and we call on the name of God in the name of Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, to send out your spiritual warfare angels and to go on the offensive. And this we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Right on. All right. So here we go. Third time's a charm. And uh, if you follow uh, biblical numerology, you'll also know that, um, you know, threes are in the Holy Bible a lot, too, just like sevens. So here we go. Daniel 5, verse 1. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Two, Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels, which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes and the wives and his concubines might drink thereon. Three, then brought the golden vessels were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. So, as you can see, I bolded uh, Father Nebuchadnezzar um, so if you didn't notice, there's a transition between, uh, uh, power between, um, the former King Nebuchadnezzar who's died off. I, I don't actually have the historical information on that, but we're going with biblical text on that. And this is actually the grandson of Belshazzar. Um, there is no, uh, word for, uh, for, um, grandfather in Hebrew. And I believe also in the Aramaic, I tried looking it up and um, I believe that. So I just didn't have time to post it up. Uh, but uh, as you can see, he's taking the, when they took these vessels out from Jerusalem, um, they're defiling them with uh, getting drunk, gluttonous. And then, you know, people that are supposed to uh, um, drink for them are the only supposed to be the Levite priests. And they're only supposed to be done in uh, ceremonies that God has ordained these Levite priests that are from the tribe of Levi and uh, and only them, not even the other um, not even the other uh, tribe members in the house of Israel and the house of Judah, only the Levite priests. So this is a great uh, no, no in the eyes of God what's going on. So next one. And you can read about this in 2 Kings 25, uh, 13 through this one's 15. I actually put 16, but just bear with me. Um, and it reads 13 and the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord and the bases and the brace and sea that was in the house of the Lord. Did the Chaldees break in pieces and carried the brass of them to Babylon? 14 and the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the spoons and all the vessels of the brass wherewith they ministered, took they away. 
15 and the fire pans and the bowls and such things that were gold and gold and of silver and in silver the captain of the guard took them away so this is uh documentation of uh what happened uh to uh jerusalem when uh so this is how these vessels got there so here we go verse four and they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver of brass of iron of wood and of stone five in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand that rode over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote six then the king countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of the loins were loosened and his knees smote one against the other so as you can see i got hand um um, in bold, uh, I put the Aramaic word for it, so it's yad, and it means hand, not just hand, but power also. So there's only one with all power, and it's kind of giving us a hint of whose hand that was. And uh, also continents in uh, verse 6, if you don't understand that word, it's bright look. So the king's bright look was changed. And then also he was troubled, but his... Uh, legs got weak and his knees started uh, uh knocking together so it, he this spooked him it spooked him it it uh it took him from his uh his party life to uh you know kill buzz but uh hey you know he's in trouble and you don't even know it so let's go ahead and get to the next verse seven the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, the, the um, fortune tellers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read of this writing and show me the interpretants thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about that neck shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Eight. Then the ruler and all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof nine then was king Neb excuse then was king belshazzar greatly troubled and his countenance was changed in him and his lords were stoned so a, a stone is dumbfounded also so here we go it's history repeating itself um it happened in a king nebuchadnezzar with his dream um uh, that was the only uh difference in this and uh, he he called to his uh his so-called wise men who weren't pulling, pulling their own weight they just told him what they wanted to hear just like you know just like always you know they don't have real power they just have the power of maybe demon powers that is uh smoke and mirrors you know compared to god so with that uh, they didn't they, they didn't know how to interpret this either so same old story Verse 10, now the queen, by reasons of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let only thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. 11, there is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was he found in him. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, the father made master of the musicians, excuse me, magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. 12. For so much as an excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding, interpreting of the dreams, and showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubts, were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. It's uh, it's almost almost the same thing, you know. Daniel call for the Daniel. He knows what he's doing. His he's got uh some kind of connection with the God, you know that uh, you know that that is a true God, and above all above all else, uh, this queen is obviously um you know has been ingrained in her with uh with polytheism, which is um, multi god uh, society. To where when she says gods she's referring to her knowledge not actually the god uh, 
of Israel. But she knows there was some kind of power and he has some kind of reputation. And uh, it was it was pretty interesting when you look at the history, the uh, Judeo uh, um, belief system challenged all societies surrounding them because it was only the only monotheism uh, society out there. All the rest had multiple gods, um, a god for everything. And while the Judeo uh, belief system only had one god and his name was Jehovah. And uh, with that, we continue. 13. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel which art of the children of the captivity of Judah? From thy king my father brought out of Jewry, which was um, in my the interpretation in my uh, companion Bible is Judah. I don't know why they spelled it like that. Maybe it's more of a um a tradition or or something i don't know i couldn't tell you but that's what it says if you're wondering 14 i have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that the light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee he's uh basically the king right now is uh is basically buttering him up daniel to uh help him He's uh, nervous. It's 15. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, and they should read the writings, make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. Uh, yeah, they couldn't. <laughs> so oh, I got these pictures here in the next slide. I will end this in Strong's Concordance uh, translation. But we're gonna, I'm going to read the, the verses, and then we'll, I'll talk about it. 16, and I have heard of thee that thou canst uh, make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now, if thou canst read the writings, make known to me the interpretation thereof. Thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about your neck and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. 17, then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be be to thyself daniel's basically saying um you can keep your gifts and i'll give rewards to and give rewards to another give it to somebody else yet i will read the writings unto the king and make known to him the interpretation he will do the what the king asks him by the interpretation 18 O thou king the most high gave nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor so he's telling them that God gave your your uh, grandfather the, the kingdom, and he's going to get to who do you think gave you your kingdom? So, but before that, I want you to see, point out that the uh, we got a uh, bold and clothed with scarlet. <clears throat> We're going to take a look deeper at these colors, okay? So, in the Strong's Concordance, it was uh, our give on uh, definition: purple or red, purple. Um, we're actually going to look at both these colors in the Holy Bible and see what it tells us. Okay, on the left I have, um, I have the uh, the cross with the thorn of crowns and a and a and a red or excuse me violet type uh, purple color, which is a symbol of royalty, and then the scarlet is a symbol of priesthood. We're going to see where that says it, where I got that from. So, I went to my Bible dictionary of the concordance. And uh, it talks about colors. In Genesis 37.3 um, talks about the scarlet thread. And uh, this reads in the concordance. The Jews understood the art of coloring clothes, clothes though they did not origin originate it, but learned from the Phoenicians and the Egyptians. The Bible mentions four artificial colors. One. Purple, obtained from shellfish of the Mediterranean Sea, and it was royal and noble color. So with the purple, you, you know, royalty, that's the the the, the uh, color of royalty. And it refers to Judges 8, 26 and Luke 16, 19. So I picked uh, Judges out of this to um, to get that interpretation. And it reads, Judges 8, 26, the weight of the golden ear earrings that have requested a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold besides ornaments and the colors and the purple raiment that was on the kings of median and besides the chains that were about the camel's necks 
So this uh, color was reserved for kings, for rulers. Okay. So we're going on to number two in the back to the Bible dictionary uh, under blue, obtained from the same source as purple, Exodus 25, 4, and Esther 1, 6. And uh, scarlet and crimson seem to indicate the same color and are obtained from an insect resembling the, the cock chineal and the above colors, one, two, and three. Okay, so Exodus 25, 4, uh, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. So this is a, talking about some of the uh, Levitical uh, uh, priesthood. In connections with white, we were using the curtains of the tabernacle and in the clothing of the priest. So even these colors were also used by the priesthood too. So as you can see, I got some pictures of uh, a banner of Jesus, King of King and Lord our Lords with the purple raiment right there. And then there's kind of a scarlet background in the King of King, Lord our Lords with the crown and the blood. So if you don't know, Jesus is from the bloodline, not just the son of God, but on his mother's side from the bloodline of King David, which is royal bloodline, and also the Levite um, priest, the tribe priest, excuse me, the Levite tribe. So um, that's that's where his reference of the high priest comes into uh, the New Testament as a title. So he's uh, the king of king and lord of lords. Okay, so we're going to go to Revelation 17 right now. And and what we just read, as, as we understand Daniel is an overlay of Revelations. I'm going to read Revelation 17, 3, and it, and it goes. So he carried away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. So what does a scarlet-colored beast mean? It's a representation of a priesthood. So, and the beast that you see in Revelation is also representative of a one world. So, you got the scarlet color priesthood, one world of all the beasts that are molded together to create one. So, you got a one world priesthood. Okay, that's my interpretation of it, and I can back it up with scripture. Okay, full names of blasphemy. What are those blasphemies? Well, there's two of them that... Um, that Jesus was accused of by the Pharisees. One, he was saying that he had the authority of God, and two, that he could forgive sin. And uh, so, if you know any uh, people besides God and our Lord Jesus Christ that forgive, um, that are equals to uh, uh, the our our uh, Lord and Savior, I, I would really get out of that church ASAP. And uh, also, uh, if they can forgive sin, nobody can forgive sin but God in the name of Jesus. Okay, so if a church tells you that or a denomination, I'm going to let you fit in the, the pegs uh, and, and and put in the puzzle pieces yourself. So I can stay out of controversy and, 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 um, and speak on God's word. Okay, so having seven heads or seven kings. And these ten horns are are powers. That you, um, when you hear a horn in uh, prophecy, the horns tie to um, certain powers, like um, uh, rulers. Uh, it could be, um, you know, they use horns to for the battle cries in battle. You know, like they, they blew the horns, and so they're just symbolic of that. Okay, verse four. And when a woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colors, so now we got somebody who's not only trying to be uh, purple and scarlet, which is like king and king and lord of lords. Uh, and she's a woman decked in gold and precious stones and pearls and have a golden cup in her hand full of abomination, the filthiness of her fornication. So this is uh, spiritually speaking. Um, yeah, they're uh, fornicating. Uh, fornication physically is going around sleeping with multiple partners. But in a spiritual uh, aspect, it's talking about uh, fornication of religions and, and false religions, uh, be specifically, and uh, to be specific, and also uh, uh, 
doctrines or whatever, you know, going against the word of God, basically. So as this woman in red and purple and scarlet color, she's trying to say she's a ruler and a high priest. So you're getting a better picture of what's going on with this. And I hope you're understanding five. And upon her forehead was the name mystery Babylon, the great. So we're talking about Babylon right now. So open your ears. Uh, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So this is a one world system. Color the scarlet color of the beast is some, some kind of high, uh, some priesthood, full names of blasphemy, saying they're God, saying they can forgive sin, with kings, uh, seven kings and ten horns of power, and then a woman was sitting on it that was uh, that was uh, trying to play uh, uh a harlot and and these colors are tied into the king and king and lord of lords it's there's so much that says there's going to be a false messiah in revelations coming first that um you know this is not the only way to look at it you, there's it's there's nothing in this um prophecy nothing in prophecy um uh, scripture is anything taken as an idol or just trying to fill in space you know, every word is accounted for for something. And when it says something about a scarlet colored beast and arrayed in purple and scarlet color, that means something. Some people must say, ah, it's just nothing. You know what? Everything, there was, there's, everything is used in this scripture. And if you don't pay attention, you're going to miss the message. And uh, with that, you can look into Daniel 5, 16. King uh, Belshazzar promised Daniel royalty and riches. Let Daniel, like Daniel, excuse me, we are supposed to reply to the devil. Keep your riches. The devil's in the end times. He's the false uh, Messiah, and he's going to come as a king of Babylon type. And like Daniel, we're supposed to reply to the devil. Keep your riches because your kingdom is at an end. Thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. So here's some of the Hebrew, if you want to check this out, of those colors. And in Matthew 27, 28, our Lord and Savior, they stripped him and put him in a scarlet robe. You know, his, his priesthood, his royalty. And, um, well, this is the scarlet is the is the priesthood um, most assigned to. And then uh, you can see it's the same word uh, as as the scarlet in the Revelations and is in Daniel. So we're going to continue on. Verse 19, and for the majesty, he gave him all the people, nations, and language. We're going back to Belshazzar, uh, listening to Daniel talk to him about King Nebuchadnezzar right now. And for the majesty, he gave him all the people, nations, languages, trembles, feared before him. Whom he would, he slew, and whom he would, he kept alive, and whom he would, he set up and whom he would be put down so he's telling them that god gave this king all this um authority and it came from the most high so 20 but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride so that's the problem that's why what happened to king nebuchadnezzar was heart, hardened heart and pride he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him 21 and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild asses they fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with dew of heaven till then they knew that the most high god ruled in the kingdom of men and that he pointed over whomsoever he will so as you can see uh the god uh you know our most high god uh, punished Nebuchadnezzar back in Daniel 4 and made him an animal to, to to move around and eat as grass with the wild animals, you know, the asses and the um, and the oxen. So, 22. And though his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thy heart, thou knowest all this. So as you can see in the left corner, there's a difference between knowing and learning. Um, this is, is the difference of what between Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar. He didn't learn from his uh, his uh, grandfather's mistakes. 
23, but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and thou hast brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk in the wine in them. So, as you can see, vessels, uh, we're going to talk about that, but let me finish the the chapter, or excuse me, the verse the, for the slide. And, um, excuse me. And the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lord, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver, the gods of gold, excuse me, and gold of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, those are whose are all the ways thou hast not glorified. 24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him. From who? From him. And it should have been capital. I got it from Bible Gateway. And they should have capitalized him in verse 24. That's a, a, a symbolic and actually proper um, uh, lettering for God. Capital H. And his writ and was, writing was written. Okay, so as you can see, I... Uh, I uh, use the vessels. Uh, I, uh, I I bolded it right, and here in the Strong's Concordance, vessels can also mean man. You know, vessel, utensils, a cup, um, something that contains uh, uh, something. So, what is a man? Can a man have it be as a vessel? Well, he could have the Holy Spirit within him, and uh, as you can see, uh, this is a foreshadowing of what's going to be in revelations okay so this may be uh you know when you go to the temple of the lord having these vessels within the temple of the lord in revelations those vessels in the temple of the lord will be us will be us so as you can see the foreshadowing like just like when it comes to animal sacrifice in hebrews 10 with jesus christ that god said i do not want the the sacrifice of bulls and oxen every year you know i wanted a sacrifice of you know a, basically they needed a perfect sacrifice in hebrews 10 and um and that sacrifice would abolish all their sacrifices but they were letting you know it was a foreshadowing of what was to come and christ was that that uh messiah that we were that people have been praying for just like a foreshadowing of these vessels in the temple of God. We are those vessels. We have the Holy Spirit within us. We are the many member body of Christ. We we carry the church with us. You know, it's good. It's not no excuse not to go to church or that you have to go to church religiously and not learn anything. What I'm saying is that um, we are the, the church. And we, when two of us meet, the Lord is with us. So we continue Revelation 17, 6, going to the overlay of uh, Revelations 6, and it reads, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of the martyr of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. And when his mother Mary was exposed, means Mary, to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. So as you see, I bolded saints and holy. And it comes from the um, Greek word ha hagios. Okay. And this is the same word for both of these. Right. And the definition is sacred, holy. You should set apart by or for God, holy and sacred. So the same spirit that created Jesus is the same spirit if you've accepted Christ. As your Lord and Savior, and uh, asked Him to come into his, your heart and uh, invited the Holy Spirit in, is the same Spirit that are in the saints. Now, I thought that was pretty cool, right? We're all the same Spirit. That's why when it talks about the gifts of the Spirit, that um, you know we shouldn't be envious of one or the other, uh, having certain spiritual gifts and one others don't, because we are all of the same Spirit working for the the betterment of the kingdom of heaven and the glory of God and, um, and to uh, give the good news of Jesus Christ. 
So with that, uh, spiritually, uh, in Revelations, that drunk woman, she's like a false prophet, you know. She's a false teacher or gluttonous parasite, you know. Uh, literally, they get rich off the name of God, using the word of God to win over the hearts and minds of the masses. You got to see with spiritual eyes, you know. You can't just totally look at all the time. You know, with just regular eyes, you got to learn to see with spiritual eyes to see these things. And if you don't got them, then you pray for them. God will give it to you. So I want to go to something when it talked about um, getting drunk on the blood of martyrs and of the of, of the saints. So I believe uh, it could be spiritually, you know, speaking, but also I don't take away from the literal because where we're headed right now, I put up a peer reviewed journal and this, this is a, a this is a website where it's coming to where they're believing that the promise of young blood will give um, vitality and youth, almost like a fountain of youth. Ambrosia, if you don't know what ambrosia is, it stems from uh, from ancient Greece and uh, it was considered the, the nectar of the gods. Some said it, it was honey. Um, I, I remember, recall, I can't find where I saw it, but it actually was blood. I believe it was blood and I can't show you where i saw it because it was from either a documentary or um that I, I can't recall and also um uh i've heard of uh born again christians that were prior um satanists or witches or warlocks and they uh enlightened us what happens in the occult and ambrosia is uh something that's uh talked about okay so i'm gonna read this um it has been a theorized in the past the blood may act as a fountain of youth and medical treatment. Records indicate the ancient Egyptian kings bathed in blood in search of the rejuvenation and the blood of fallen Roman gladiators was drunk for strength. The case of the Pope Innocent VIII, also known as Sibo, may present one of the earliest instances of blood transfusion in the 1490s. The Pope suffered from an illness which uh, left him in partially comatose state. He may have received treatment for his condition in a form of blood transfusion and the and from three boys age 10. Okay, so here's where I got this information from on this website. I tried to put the actual uh, uh, I actually tried to put the uh, the website on and uh, and uh, what happened was, uh, excuse me, what happened was um, uh, they, uh, it, 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 this, this thing came up. Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. I get regrouped myself. Okay, and uh, what I want to talk about is the drinking of blood and also this Pope. I mean, come on, people. Let's get, let's get real. We're not talking about somebody losing their life and they needed life-giving blood to... Um, to, to bring them back we're talking about people living in vanity trying to beat um trying to beat death you know trying to be uh, to prolong their life with the innocent blood i mean this pope you know hey i don't know this guy and i haven't researched him but i mean was there really transfusion in the past i don't i i, I worked in the medical field i don't even think blood transfusion was a thing back then so when it said a blood transfusion, I think it was more like uh, doing something that was uh, abominable. Uh, and then the fact that they're using three boys age 10 uh, sets off a, an alarm in my head. When one of these testimonies of these uh, occult uh, that was born again. And uh, they said that, you know, one of the highest uh, forms of sacrifice is human sacrifice. And not just that. Uh, a, the sacrifice of the innocent and not just that the sacrifice of a boy under the age of puberty so when he had the three boys ages 10 i mean i don't know man that seems very very fishy to me because it comes down to some of these guys talking about that you know they, they sacrifice these boys for this pope if they did that's that's uh that that, that is uh, unacceptable that is appalling um I don't, I mean, why would they go to a child? Why wouldn't they go to a grown man? You know, it would have done the same thing. It would have done the same thing if he was losing blood, you know, but they, they choose these children 
to uh to do these things and uh you know and, and it's appalling because people are gonna go with it and we're and, and and my note says satan's counterfeit attempts to replace the blood of christ nothing new under the sun the ancient abominations have remained and continue until the return of the son of man people will deify science we will find themselves blindly falling into abominations this is a gateway into the realm of Satan through science, which will eventually lead to an abomination. The road to hell is paved in good intentions. You can read about it in Leviticus 17, 10 through 12, verse 14, and chapter 19, 26. Hmm. Yeah. Where did this come from? Okay, so I went to the book of Enoch. Uh, book of Enoch, chapter 7 reads, and the others together with them took unto themselves wives and each chose for themselves one and they began to go unto them to defile themselves with them. They defiled themselves not because um, women are dirty. They defiled themselves because they were immortal beings leaving their inhabitants to um, to participate in the act of sex, regardless if it was marriage. And they know better because they know God and they're held to a higher standard. So that's where the defilement came from. And they taught them charms, enchantments, and cuttings of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. And they're teaching them forbidden stuff that is evil. Number two. And they became pregnant, and they bore great giants whose height was 3,000 L's. That's like the size of a skyscraper. Who consumed all the acquisitions of men. These are giants are like the titans in the Greek mythology. Okay, so... The acquisitions are like the resources, the skill set, whatever, you know, is a part of this uh, acquisitions of men. And it continues. And when the man could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. So they started eating them. Right. These giants are very vile. They're very temperamental and they're evil. OK. In verse five. And they begin to sin against the birds, beasts, reptiles, fish. OK. So. You know, it's kind of hard to think, and you probably don't want to spend too much time thinking about it. But the sin wasn't because they ate them. The sin was because they, they fornicated with them, right? The bestiality is more of the word. And as we continue to devour one another's flesh, so they devoured their, they ate each other as cannibals. Also, there was no, there was no boundaries to these giants and drink the blood. And they were, this is where the origin of drinking blood come from. And just like ambrosia, in the um in the mythology of the uh the greek gods drinking ambrosia and like i said i can't prove it because i don't got i don't mess with the cult books but ambrosia was in the past i believe had blood mixed with uh, alcohol something that kind of gave it a taste a different taste right so you can you can take that to the bank or if it doesn't apply let it fly so Okay, let's uh, continue God's word. Verse uh, 25. And this is written, that was written, mean means tekel up for up paran. Up faran. No, up farzin. This is the interpretation of the mean. God had numbered thy kingdom and finished it. God it gives a, a beginning and end to this Tekel, thou art weighed in the balance and our front wanding. Yeah, and not in his favor. And 28, Perez, the kingdom is divided and given the Medes and to the Persians. So, it's basically a sentence. Your judgment just came down on King Belshazzar. 29, then commanded Belshazzar and the clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck. And made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slayed. So there he goes, he's dead. With that night, you know. 31. And Darius the medium took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. So 62. This approximately, for all you historians who like time timelines, approximately six, 466 BC. Okay, so next slide. Going back to Daniel 2 with that statue, right? We're actually moving down as the head of gold of Babylon. We're moving down to uh, 
the chest and the arms of Medio Persia. So we're moving from top to bottom uh, to another kingdom. So just uh, understand that we're uh, in the next chapter, we're going to be talking about the kings of Persia and the kings of Median, I believe. Yeah, I think I said it right. Yep. So with that, I hope you got something from this. We're going to shut it down. Um, we got 40 minutes into this, and I hope you got something from this. And God bless you, and, and stay in God's word every day. Every day is a good day when you stay in God's word.